welcome to My Smart Tech TV. My name's Jess and I'm your host. And today I'm going to be chatting to Tony Maguire, who is the Regional Director of Australia and New Zealand at D2L. D2L is an online learning platform and they work with schools, universities, right through to corporates. So welcome, Tony. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm going to get you to start off by introducing yourself and your background. Uh, my name's Tony Maguire. I'm the Regional Director here in Australia and New Zealand with D2L. So we're a learning technology company. We've been around for about 20 years, and my background is starting many years, uh, moons ago as a primary school teacher, through working for companies like Apple and Oracle, uh, and learning technology, whether I use it in the classroom myself or working with techs and techs today, has been a real passion for me. So it's kind of brought me to this point after about 30 years or so, yeah. I'm sure you've seen a lot of changes then from when you were a primary school teacher to what's available now for, for teachers in, in classrooms and things. It's interesting. Um, when I started teaching, I actually started doing basic coding in Apple Basic with the kids and logo in the classroom. That was back in the 80s. So we were you know, getting the kids, the grade fives, grade sixes to do really simple coding. And I was really interested when it kind of came back around and everyone started coding again and teachers got involved in coding. Um, so in, in a sense, that hasn't changed. But the ubiquity, obviously, of the technology, uh, the I guess the ability to connect anywhere, anytime, beyond, that's really the, the difference. You could cut yourself off, but it's really difficult now to, to turn off everything that's happening around you. So, yeah. So I think, I think the underlying interest, in a sense, is still there. The needs to, uh, to think about how you interact with technology, control technology, take control of it, is important. But we're just being hammered by it at the moment. So I, I think it's, it's good to... No, you can control. Tell me about D2L. Good question. <laughs> Excellent question, actually. So D2L is a global technology company. Really, our role is to help our partners like universities, government, schools, corporates, associations, make better use of technology so that their learners, their users, their employees, their students can better access quality education, engage in a way which helps them be successful, helps teachers, academics monitor progress. And then once that progress is occurring, to then be able to find ways to bubble that information up in terms of awards or micro-credentials. And we do that all in one platform, which I think is a little bit different. Lots of other technology companies have got lots of different components. Yeah. But I think D2L has a kind of a unified approach to that. So one platform that really speaks about all of those different needs in one way. Yeah. And what so you mentioned, okay, so part of it, we'll break it down. Part of it's that remote, remote learning um, element. What are the benefits of remote learning? Or why why remote learning? <laughs> why remote learning? It's a really good question. Again, before COVID hit. We thought of remote learning as something you had to do maybe at the most extreme edge of, of your experience. Mm -hmm. If you couldn't get to school, you were crook, maybe you did something online. Um, today, we know that anything can occur that will cut us off from you know, those normal face-to-face, on-campus, in-class kinds of experiences. So we need to think about how we better provision for that. There's another element to this too, which I think is really important. We can buy a movie online. We can buy anything from firewood to, you know, a new set of PJs and it gets delivered to the door. We take that through to devices. We can have anything delivered to us virtually on a device. So we have to start thinking about how we change our understanding of remote learning to something which is more ubiquitous. And why can't we consume learning on a device interact, be in a collaborative space, and get some of those social connections that are important, important in learning on a device. So that then when we do get the chance to go on campus or come back to class, it's actually enhanced the experience rather than being the siloed, extreme response to a difficult situation. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, I mean, we're we're in the, the pig pandemic right now and we've seen a huge shift of um of people going to remote learning and I think when I used to think of remote learning I would you, as you say that I think of you know universities or people that lived out in regional areas whereas now 
schools of, of everything's gone remote what yeah. what are you seeing you know, during this time and what is that showing us about i guess the future of the australian workforce so the australian workforce really is coming off the back of a fairly rigid approach to how funding was applied to training workforce capabilities were very much looked at in terms of what you're doing within a particular job what you did previously maybe from an undergraduate perspective or from a school perspective and how that would then give you pathways into employment I think those barriers, those silos have very much started to erode away. Mm -hmm. If we think about the research coming out from the foundation of young Australians, it looks at the way in which skills are so portable across lots of different jobs. So the jobs um, that are currently uh, available uh, to school leavers is going to fundamentally change over mm -hmm. the next two to five years. We know that even today, we talked about coding before. Teachers couldn't do courses in coding a few years ago. Now it's all the rage. Uh, you really do need to be tuning your skills up. From an employment perspective, that research from the Foundations of Young Australians really speaks to the fact that what you learn in one job is, trans is transferable really across probably 20 or so other roles. They think about the ways in which those skills that you pick up as you move through your employment don't just prepare you for your dream job they prepare you for a dream cluster of employment opportunities so I think we have to move away from those rigid approaches to if I do this course these are the jobs available to me mm -hmm. to a much more flexible way of thinking about what our future is as a workforce when we get that right and we can understand what training and skills have been developed and recognize that more holistically for the learner we can then start to reward that and plug in different flexible options to where their employment might take them. Mm. And technology can really do that, can't it? I mean, like it can really give you the, those sorts of, of skills. When it comes to, um, to remote learning, what it, how do you keep people engaged and motivated? And I'm sure the answer is different for different age groups, but overall, what are some of the strategies that you have to implement to, to, to keep them there? That is a... That's a, that's a large can of worms. I guess I'll start there with one example that Victoria Uni took. Mm. So Victoria Uni here in Melbourne took a, a very radical approach about four years ago. And they, they moved from a traditional um, multi-unit, multi-subject approach, semester by semester, which most of us have gone through, and they looked at what their students actually needed. They had assessed that the students going through that previous approach were not achieving well. So they radically changed to what they call the block model. So that meant that you do one subject for one month. That's it, nothing else. So it's, it's concentrated, it is distilled. All the assessment, everything you, expect, you would expect to be there is still there. The volume of work is the same. But instead of break it out across different kind of weeks and, and modules, we just focus on this one thing. I spoke before about the complexity of lives. Victoria University has a similar kind of demographic to Western Sydney University. Mm -hmm. So understanding what the, the students truly needed and responding to that meant three things for the university. First, they had to radically change the way in which their academics thought about working with students. And the academics stood up and did that magnificently. The second thing they had to do was they had to think about the way in which they restructured the course. So instead of being across eight weeks, it's now across four weeks. How are we gonna make sense of this? So they actually re-architected all of those subjects and they used technology to underpin that so that whether the student was on campus and in class was in hybrid, blended kinds of modes or when COVID hit, fully remote, it didn't matter. The regulator's still happy. The program of work still continues. The robustness of the assessment is still there, but the students were actually more successful. The research data that, uh, Univ that Victoria University shared with us was that during the first six months of COVID, many of their cohorts actually improved in their marks. I'm not in a position to actually discuss why that was. I didn't see the deeper research. 
but I can't not believe that that singular focus on one subject, drowning out the other noise around uh, the student life and being able to just work on an architected course that was really, really straightforward and a singular focus, but wasn't a massive uh, improvement in what they had been doing. So I think that's one approach, thinking about the program as a whole. The second piece is how do you think about the social activities? So Jess, I've been on Zoom calls, as I said, since about five o'clock this morning. We all get tired of Zoom. Yeah. So what are other ways <laughs> in which we can start to think about collaborative activities. It can't just be the fact that we have Zoom breakout rooms and then we all come back together. We have to think about being more, gee, I guess, innovative in the way that we do things. So when we're thinking about work placements, and we can't do those anymore. We've, we've got a heap of nurses who haven't been able to complete units because they can't get into, into hospitals to complete the, the, the final piece of that. So maybe there are things we can do around better simulations higher quality simulations and, and, and 3D um, lab work where we can actually test how uh, students move about in particular settings, whether it's a, it's a, a virtual uh, uh, hospital setting, it's, a, it's, it's lab work based upon uh, you know, uh, um, physical chemistry set, could be anything. How do we then put them into groups because we want to be able to test those soft skills and how do we map all of those components together, that's the challenge of, of learning technologies, I think, being able to provide a digital spine so that whether or not you're redeveloping a program, you're looking at all these dis disparate kinds of experiences and pulling together in a singular way. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Is there any sort of thing I've missed or any parting words that you want to sort of say? I guess my final comment would be one of optimism. The last 18 months have been particularly challenging. And when one looks at um, the daily news feeds, there's lots, of, um, there's lots of news that would give folks um, pause to think that where we're going in the future is not a particularly great place. Um, I would suggest it's actually the opposite. I think COVID has taught us more about being connected, being centered, and understanding what we truly want to get out of our lives and I think there's been a real recognition from employers and I think there's an emerging understanding from education providers that they can't stick with what they've done before. So I think there's a lot of work going on to better understand what students truly need and the students themselves have a much clearer understanding of what they want employees equally in the workplace. I don't want to be in the office five days a week. Okay, so how are we going to make that happen? Mm. Okay, we're going to have these structures in place. We're going to use technology in this particular way. We're still going to support wellness and collaboration in these ways. And we're going to track and improve our approach to your performance management, sorry, not performance management, to your career aspirations in better ways. So I think the melding of technology now allows us to answer questions that we didn't ask 12 months ago, 18 months of ourselves or of our employers or of our universities. And I think one last piece, I go back to that research from the Foundations of Young Australia, to Foundation of Young Australians. TAFE Queensland has partnered with them to look at what are the new skills clusters we should be thinking about. How should it be provided? We're taking research now from entities that are solely focused on the aspirations, needs, and requirements of young Australians. That is a massive difference. We're going to them first for the answers. Once we understand what they, they need, we can now structure our micro-credentials, our short courses, our professional offerings in ways that make sense for them. And we're gonna try and map those in a way so that you can understand what skills you've built and be able to reflect those back to employers in a way which helps you improve your job prospects. Mm -hmm. If we can do that, 
the next two to three years for those Queenslanders in particular uh, could be really interesting. At this point, we've got about 425,000 Queenslanders going through that program of work with TAFE Queensland, doing a whole variety of undergraduate, postgraduate, micro-credential and, and short courses. I think TAFE Queensland has really looked at the opportunity to reinvent parts of their business. And for a number of other TAFE organisations around Australia that I talk to, they're seen as best practice here in Australia. Uh, I think that's a really strong play because vocation, vocational education has tended to get um, beaten up a little bit over the journey. I think they're doing a great job. So optimism for me.